Good afternoon, Ani Bojo. This is Carmen Wabagishik Nuchtai, Director of Health and Community well Wellness for Tikmakshing and Anishinaabek. Welcome to our bi weekly health QA. Today is November 19th, and we are at 3 25 right now in the afternoon. Um, so I do have a um, panel, um, and so you can see the panel. Uh, we have Lisa Gru, who is our home care manager. Uh, then we have Rachel Pattison, who is our health programs manager. We have Marina McCumber, who is our community health nurse. Uh, we have, um, I don't know if you see the same thing that I do, but Bridget Prouse is in the, in the background. And then up to Amanda, who is our health uh, promotions manager, and then myself. So welcome everybody. And um, it's been a long two weeks. It feels like I haven't done this in a while. Uh, so uh, we are going to discuss um, mental health issues today and um, a little bit about the framework and we're going to start you off with some statistics from Marina. Take it on Marina. And Abel here to update you on the COVID statistics um, as of uh, today, a tick mixing has had no new cases and we have had one resolved case. Public Health Sudbury District has um, no new cases today and confirmed cases ha are, have been uh, 200 or so far have been 210 resolved cases, 189 cases, deceased two, total tests 101,790 and provincially new cases today are 1,210. Confirmed cases so far in Ontario have been 99,372 uh, and of those 83,301 have been resolved. So as of November 16th, Public Health Library and District has moved to a yellow protect category and strengthened public health measures are in effect. This change was initiated because of the case counts reaching an all time high, having 42 cases reported in just one week. The numbers combined with an overstretched health system make stronger protective measure, measures necessary. We have been closely monitoring local numbers and are happy to report that we are not seeing a significant increase in cases this week as we did last week. Public health continues to encourage Sudbarians to take precautions as though COVID-19 could be anywhere. Please continue to limit your travel outside of your homes, limit interactions with persons outside of your home, stay home, even if exper uh, experiencing mild COVID symptoms, wear face covering if you are closer to uh, somebody clo closer than two meters uh, to a person outside of your home. Keep your hands and or clean your hands and or sanitize, practice respiratory etiquette and avoid travel to areas with high COVID rates if possible. Okay, thank you, Marina. Um, so a theme for today's Q&A is mental health. We are aware that the pandemic has placed added stress on everyone and want to address this topic, if only briefly. The pandemic has caused various forms of stress, from financial stress losses to anxiety about contracting COVID-19, to loneliness from isolation. Uh, the Shawinigan Health Center wants to remind the Tikmakshing residents um, that we have supports available for you. And um, if you're feeling lonely, anxious, or you know, just feeling low, um, please feel free to uh, give us a call. Uh, don't be ashamed. Uh, this is perfectly normal. Um, and we understand and we are here for you. Here in the Tikmakshing, we do have the Sacred Fire uh, with, the, with our elder uh, Brian Nuchtai, and that is on every Monday at our Sacred Grounds. Uh, he is available for one-on-one -on -one sessions upon request. Uh, there are also <coughs> mental health helplines also available, such as the Hope for Wellness um, and many others as well. Um, we do want to remind you just to, um, if you do come to visit uh, Brian, that uh, you practice those precautionary measures. He will also uh, practice those and um, yeah, for those services. Uh, we will... Um, also talk about um, we are in the virtual mode at the moment uh, for our organization. So what, what this means is that all services will continue virtually 
via online meetings, uh, but all essential in-person services will continue with the utmost protection and precautions in place. Virtual mode will remain in place until January 20th, unless the COVID response team um, uh, reevaluates and um, either shortens or extends. Uh, services in the band office will be limited. The majority of staff will be working from their home offices and will still be available to provide services remotely uh, via phone calls, emails, virtual meetings, um, recordings, <laughs> um, all these kinds of things, lovely things. Um, any scheduled in-person meetings will be held virtually and um, unless approved. And please continue to call the front desk if um, they're able, and they will be able to direct you in your call. Thank you. Uh, we are gonna move on to Amanda and who will talk a bit about the uh, retail stores. Okay, so we received a question about if the stores will be closing. Um, we just want to let you know that the COVID-19 response team have been meeting regularly to assess the situation and recommend that the stores remain open at this time. Each store will have a full-time COVID-19 screener in the building to ensure that all patrons and staff are following the protocols in place. Our COVID-19 response team will continue to monitor the situation in our area and will make decisions accordingly. These measures are in place for the safety of our community, all workers and visitors and patrons. Okay, we'll move on to Rachel. Hi everyone. So as Carmen stated earlier, um, we wanna focus um, this week's um, Zoom on, um, on looking after our mental health. It's really important um, that we look after ourselves and one another. Um, we, um, we know we need to also remember this is the time that we need to lean on one another. Uh, we can't be, some of us can't be there in person with each other, but we need to look for ways um, that we can stay close emotionally, even though we can't be there physically with, with each other. Um, so while you're staying in touch, stay in touch with each other and reach out if you need supports. Um, we have um, a lot of um, supports available in the community. We have two mental, um, two wellness workers that you can reach out to. Um, their, their numbers are listed on our website. Um, for our youth, we have a number of youth workers that are available just to sit and chat. Uh, but there's also, you know, virtual links that you guys can reach out to. Um, there are listed, uh, Carmen mentioned one earlier, um, and there's Connects Ontario. It's a whole host of, of information available on there. And that link is also um, listed on our, on the Utik McShane website. Um, so, you know, reach out, stay close to your friends, do your virtual chats, find innovative ways to stay connected. Uh, but you also have to look after yourself physically as well. So try and get outside. We we are enjoying a really late fall. Um, so enjoy the nice weather, get out and clear your mind. So just look for ways to keep yourself healthy. Um, we will also, as part of our um, support to our community and helping each other stay safe and, um, and healthy, we will also be focusing a lot of our programming um, for our youth and um, community members on being able to maintain your mental health through these trying times. So if you need support, reach out. Thank you much. Good afternoon. I'll be talking a little bit about COVID-19 fatigue. So for most people, COVID fatigue is a reflection of how challenging behavior changes. I mean, efforts like quitting smoking, beginning an exercise routine, or dieting to lose weight. In the beginning, it's easy to make lifestyle changes. Even a number of drastic ones can be sustained over a short term, but over a long term, it can be hard. And the more new behaviors you undertake, the harder it can be. So some tips that you can uh, use to stay on track is if you're experiencing COVID fatigue, you can try being physically active. So exercise is a great coping mechanism in which it impacts your mood and uh, outlook are usually uh, immediate. You can also talk to others, talk to others about how you're feeling, the challenges you're having. Those can be therapeutic and you can find out what you're experiencing is common even talking out loud to yourself can help. Oops. Okay. So Rachel, 
I just noticed I have another part. Yep. <laughs> so there's, just to continue on with what Lisa was giving with regards to some tips, um, you know, thinking differently. This may be easier said than done, but realize that there are some things that you can't control, um, such as the rising number of cases or the behavior of other people. Instead, focus on things that you can change and that you can control. For example, restricting your grocery, your, your grocery shopping, you know, planning appropriately, um, you know, only shopping once a week, um, recognizing that we are part in an ever-changing world and things are different um, right now, but they will continue to get different. And if we all do our part, things will get better. Um, practicing mindfulness and meditation. Uh, this allows uh, you to be in the present moment and not to worry about the future or fret over the past. Um, and it can be done anytime, anywhere. And, and the more you practice, the better you get at it. It just takes a couple seconds. Um, give yourself a COVID break. Limit how much your time you're consuming, um, you're watching the news on uh, or reading information about COVID. Um, you know, COVID fatigue is a real thing and we, um, we do get really tired of it. Um, you know, so we do need a break from it as much as we need to know you need a break from it. Um, so, an, and then avoid getting into debates about people with it. Everybody's got their own views about it. Save yourself some grief and just don't get into the debates about the COVID and responses about school or masks or just, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion and everybody else is struggling as well. Uh, turn COVID precautions into a habit. Um, write down your commitment um, to new behaviors, such as always having a mask. Um, in my house, uh, my front door, my desk, it went from mitts to a little basket full of uh, masks now. So, you know, we've got our Sunday night ritual of washing all the masks and replenishing that basket. So changing our habits to meet the changing needs of where we are in society is really important. Um, having hand sanitizer on you at all times and washing your hands. It's a practice we should have all been doing, but this is a big reminder to, you know, to continue and be more diligent at washing your hands. Um, keeping others and, you know, by you doing your part, you're keeping other people in your community safe. We're keeping our elders safe. We're keeping our babies safe. So if we all do our part. Um, and these behaviors will become a habit. Um, it's, it's, it's proven, it will happen. So while the pandemic may be a challenge for all of us, remember that we will work together and we will get through this as a community. And please don't give up, don't despair, um, and don't throw caution to the wind, just continue to stay strong and follow the, the protocols that and the recommendations. That's it. Okay, miigwech. I think those are um, really, um, to end this uh, recording and to end this uh, week's health q &A, I think that's a uh, really good advice. So miigwech and uh, have a great week and we'll see you in two more weeks. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe.